Hello viewers, welcome to April quotes with Hakim Ajibosi. Uh, these quotes are put together using the letters that are contained in the month April. This is a monthly video, so sit back, relax, learn and enjoy. If this is your first time joining me um, going through this motivational video, uh, the concept behind this video is to use the letters in each month to search for a motivational or inspirational statement that have been used in the past by a prominent person um, and then we'll talk about it and if you have comment and concern you can leave your comment in the comment section below and um, so this month we're doing the month of April and April has the letters A P R I L so each sentence we're gonna be discussing today will start with or will begin with those letters A P R I L so A we start one sentence P, we start the other one R we start the other one you know like that you get the concept so that's the concept behind how this video is put together okay first letter letter A a man who has never gone to school may steal from a freight car but if he has a university education he may steal the whole railroad. This is a very um, big uh, sentence. Okay, it says a man who has never gone to school may steal from a car, you know, steal something from it. But if he has a university education, he may steal the whole railroad. You can you can extract the concept behind uh, in this sentence. Uh, before we start breaking it down, let's look at who who said this uh, statement. Theodore Roosevelt was the person that made this statement. Uh, if you don't know who Theodore Roosevelt is, Theodore Roosevelt Jr often referred to as Teddy, or his initial TR, was an American politician, statesman, conservationist, naturalist, historian, and writer who served as the 26th president of the United States from 1901 to 1909. So he did he did eight years, so that's like two terms in the office. He was born October 27, 1858. Theodore Roosevelt's birthplace was the National Historic Site in New York. New York, New York. Uh, he died January 6, 1919 uh, at Sagamore Hill National Historic Site, Cove Neck. New York. Uh, his presidential term were during September 14, 1901 to March 4, 1909. He was of the Republican Party and he had children Theodore Roosevelt Jr., Alice Roosevelt, uh, Longworth, and more. And his spouse was Edith. Edith Roosevelt, uh, 1886 to 1919, Alice Hathaway Lee Roosevelt, 1880 to 1884. So it looks like he married two wives. Okay. All right. So back to this statement, right? He said, "A man who has no, no, who has not gone to school will steal from a freight car." But if he has 
a university education, he might steal the whole railroad. So the concept behind this statement was um, big picture, knowledge. So imagine if if you didn't have any education, let's say you did not go to a high school. I'm just using that as an example. You didn't go to a high school. Um, it is expected that your intelligent quotient or your smartness will be limited to what you know. Okay, so if you're trying to steal from a car, you know, because of what you know, uh, someone that actually went to a university, you know, will not try to steal from a car. It will, it will try to steal the railroad, the whole railroad that has the train and the goods in it and everything. As you can see, um, this concept is trying to bring out the big picture. Like, always try to better yourself, okay? What you don't know, you will never know until you know. You will never know until you know. So, that's why um, education is important, especially university education. Uh, don't say you can never get achieve that. Don't say you can never go to school or anything. Or don't say, oh, in my family, nobody goes to school. We just do this. Now, I'm not saying that if you go to, if you have a university education, you're automatically better than somebody that does not. That is not what I'm saying. Get the big picture. So, the big picture here is seek knowledge, um, learn more stuff, learn every day, and instead of thinking small, you will have the ability to think big. You see what I'm saying? So if you if you're just thinking about feeding a homeless person, like giving a meal in the morning. If that's what you're thinking, you could as you might as well be thinking about, hmm, let me let me get this homeless guy and like let me teach him how he can make money so he can afford the things he couldn't. So that way you don't have to feed that person anymore. Now they can feed themselves because they know how to make money. Now they are clean up, they're good to go. And no longer on the street so that's all i can uh, explain about that sentence so if you have more sentence uh more comments on this sentence you can add it in the uh section uh comment section below and uh now we're gonna see uh where and when the theodore roosevelt made this statement uh, this statement was referenced in numerous books. I was unable to find a direct evidence that linked that statement to Theodore Roosevelt. But I was able to find books where the author of those books referenced Theodore Roosevelt as the source of this statement. So... Uh, some of these numerous books are USA by Rail plus Canada's Main Routes by John Pitt was made in 2019. You can find it in page 10. Uh, it was also referenced in another book called The Miracle of Man, Evidence for God from Human Nature by Jim Howard, 2017, page 60 is where you can find that reference. And then the Encarta Book of Quotations by Bill Swisson, by Bill Swisson, by Bill Swinson was made in 2000. Uh, you can find that page in page 802 of that book. Also, uh, the last book I found where it was referenced in was a uh, Contract and Procurement Fraud Investigation Guidebook, 
which was made in 2017. Uh, you can find that on page Roman number eight. So think about this uh, first statement, guys. A man who has never gone to school may steal from a freight car, but if he has university education, he may steal the whole railroad. Okay, so that's it guys on, on that letter A. Always seek for knowledge. The more knowledge you have, the bigger uh, you'll be able to picture things or the bigger you'll be able to think or plan your life or the bigger and better you'll be able to resolve problems. That's the concept behind that statement. Moving on to the next letter, letter P. So, for letter P, people who think they know everything are a great annoyance to those of us who do. Now, this was a statement that was made by Isaac Asimov. Isaac Asimov. Um, this is during the course of making uh, the script for this video. It's when I knew who Isaac Asimov uh, was. So um, let's go to who he is before we talk about that statement. Who is Isaac Asimov? Isaac Asimov was an American writer and professor of biochemistry at Boston University. During his lifetime, Asimov was considered one of the big three science fiction writers, along with Robert Hay Halen and Arthur C. Clarke, a prolific writer. He wrote or edited more than 500 books more than 500 books that is a lot guys if you ask me uh when was he born he was born january 2nd 1920 in petrovici russia Ooh. and uh he died in april 6 1992 uh in brooklyn new york I guess uh, he, he later on moved to the United States and probably became a permanent resident or maybe a citizen. Uh, I couldn't find that information. Um, he wrote short stories like uh, The Fun They Had, The Last Questions, and more. He had children. Uh, children were Robin Asimov and David Asimov. He also got a spouse, uh, Janet Asimov, 1973 to 1992, and Gertrude Blugerman, 1942 to 1973. So that's who um, Isaac Asimov is. Now let's go back to that statement. It says, people who think they know everything are a great annoyance to those of us who do first of all i'm going to start explaining this from the perspective of a supervisor that have a boss that knows it all so first of all you can never satisfy that boss you can never satisfy that boss because every time you come up with a plan to accomplish a task he will always have oh how about we do it this way um how or how about we do it this way or no i think this is better you know they, they may not let you do your job so that's if you if you are a supervisor and you have a kind of boss that thinks they know everything okay it's gonna annoy the out of you so um you you just have to know that there are some people like that or let's say they are not your boss or let's say they are so they are your subordinates and they think they know everything and you try to tell them the um 
by the book way you've been you you've been taught to do that thing or by the company's policy way to do that tasking and because they think they know everything they're coming up with like 11 other ways to do the same task which maybe they're not even in accordance with the company policy or maybe they're not even in your instruction or maybe in your in your procedure so this kind of persons or personnel they are great annoyance to those uh, people that actually know um, the task and how to complete the task so um, if you have more comments on this statement actually you can comment it in the comment section below uh, because believe it or not there are people like that everywhere in your family maybe not in your direct family but in families in classes in schools in institutions in higher institution for learning in university high school you know and don't get me wrong it's okay to uh, be smart like that to know multiple ways to do something but it's just annoying you know it takes it takes a lot of um, patience to deal with people like that so I guess uh, what we can learn from here is that uh, wherever you find yourself dealing with these kind of people just have patience okay just be patient and um, maybe things will work out good maybe they will eventually get it okay um now let's go where did isaac asimov made this statement uh the science fiction grandmaster isaac asimov has received credit for this line but i have been unable to find any solid evidence uh that of where he made that statement or when okay uh if you know when this was said by Isaac Asimov would you please comment it on this uh, videos comment uh, section I want to know I want to know where he, he made his, he made that statement okay uh, but one thing I did find was that the statement was referenced in numerous books as well and a few of the books those statements were mentioned from uh, the following uh, there's a book called Quotes by Isaac Asimov that was made in 2020 by Lilith Reagan. Uh, there's another book called From Causes to Blessings, Removing Generational Causes, uh, was made in 2011 by Ken Harrington and Jan Harrington. Also, I, I found another book that was uh, titled the whole shebang i like that word shebang the whole shebang is a book actually was made in 2016 uh by moth greer so those are the books i uh i just found where those statements were referenced that were made by isaac asimov again people who think they knew they know everything uh, a great annoyance to those of us who do that's the statement okay I'm not saying I know everything but I may I don't know <laughs> but people who think they know everything a great annoyance to those of us who do who does actually know the stuff so and all you gotta do is just be patient okay and let them understand if you're the boss, you have to do it by the organization, organization's policy or by the institution's instruction or by the lay down guidelines. That's all about uh, moving on letter to P. letter R. Letter R. So, um, with letter R, we got reduce your plan to writing. The moment you complete this, you will have 
you will have definitely given concrete form for form to the intangible desire i really like this because uh, when i was younger i i somehow had an idea you know about writing things down when i when i have an idea in my head and then i just think about writing down that idea and it worked it worked for me it makes me remember uh, but lately i don't really do that no more but let's read this statement again reduce your plan to writing the moment you complete this you will have definitely given concrete form to the intangible desire okay so um what i can get from this um is that when you when you write down your plan your plan to accomplish a goal or a task you have you have bring it to reality to some level because now you know words for words what those plans are now if you didn't write it down think about the situation where you did not write it down and a day later you're trying to remember oh i had this i had this plan in my head i had this plan in my head and you never remember it again oh by the time you remember this plan it was too late okay so reduce your plan to writing always um have the habit of writing down your plan because the moment you write down your plan you have you you have definitely given that plan a concrete form now it's it's in a form where you can share it you can store it you can monetize it you can um use it to develop your community you can pass it along to generations after you okay and that's actually how some great countries today still remain to be great because they rely on the tangible forms of the plans that their ancestors have put you know in a tangible form for them to see for them to use for them to to dwell on you know for them to a deed and metamorphosis maybe into a new and bigger plan so writing down your plan is not just an act it's a generational act if well kept so um always try to do that i know nobody walks around these days with a pen and a paper in their hand if you do probably because of your job or they just a work like that they just like that because believe it or not some people do that they walk around with pen and paper in their pocket or in their backpack or in their handbag so don't be surprised that some people actually do that but in my opinion i don't think a lot of people do um so um if this video uh put that idea in you or if it has light up that uh idea in you to be you know writing down your plan hey you may not even have to carry your pen and paper with you the time and the moment you remember a plan or an idea you can just look for a pen and paper right in right there and write it down or you can just take your phone and and write it on the notes um note app that's in your phone so you see now you don't even really need a pen and paper you can, you can write it on your phone or you can record it as a voice on your phone voice recorder see these are ways um you can go about writing down your plan 
because like I said, a plan that is written down is not just an act, it has now become a tangible form that can be shared, monetized, stored, you know, transferred to oncoming generation and even it could be metamorphosized into a greater and new idea. So, uh, where did, um, who uh, made this statement? Napoleon Hill made this statement. And who is Napoleon Hill? Napoleon Hill's full name is Oliver Napoleon Hill. He was an American self-help author. He is best known for his book think and grow rich i've actually seen that book before i can't remember if i did finish it but i remember i started reading that book uh think and grow rich uh which is among the 10 best selling self-help books of all time that means that book is still selling till now you can probably find it in amazon uh uh, Napoleon Hill's works insisted that fervid expectations are essential to improving one's life. Okay, if you are like if you have big expectation for yourself, if you have big goal for yourself, they will improve your life. It certainly does because you are you can only dwell on what you know. Just like I said earlier, if you, if you don't have a big picture mindset or mentality or a bigger mindset mentality, you're just going to be what you know. So, uh, Napoleon Hill was born in October 26, 1883 in Pound, Virginia. Ooh, Virginia. Okay, okay. He died November 8, 1970. Uh, in South Carolina um, his period on earth was like uh, 1928 to 1970 his spouse was Annie Lou Norman 1943 to 1970 Florence Elizabeth Horner 1910 to 1935 uh, children are uh, Blair Napoleon Hill and David Napoleon Hill. Parents are James Monroe Hill and Sarah Blair. Those are his parents. So where did Napoleon Hill make this statement? I was unable to find any direct evidence where Napoleon Hill said this statement, but I did found that the statement was referenced in numerous books as well it was referenced in uh, a book called brilliant business plan that book was made in 2012 by kevin williams uh, also in another book called perfect timing 2012 by daniel p chiodo so that's all about that um statement that we got from the letter R. Reduce your plan to writing. The moment you complete this, you will have definitely given concrete form to the intangible desire. Let's move Sometimes on to the next letter I. I. Letter I. I don't believe you have to be better than everybody else. I believe you have to be better than you ever thought you could be this is a very profound and much more life improving statement i like this okay i don't believe you have to be better than everybody else i believe you have to be better than you ever thought you could be and believe you me once you have that kind of belief that 
you have to be better than you ever thought you could be you will you will not experience um, envy you will not experience um, shame you will not experience uh, anxiety you won't you won't because you you know you're not competing with somebody else you know you're competing with your own best don't get me wrong you can you know acknowledge other people's progress you can acknowledge their progress and their achievement that's okay but you're not their competitor you're not competing with them it's not a race it's not a sprint with them okay your life timeline is completely different from anybody else and that's more important so you can know that you don't have to think that you need to be better than everybody else no you don't have to you don't have to have that mindset all you need to do is to you know to believe that you have to be better than you ever thought you could and how do you do this because it's easier said than done how do you do this maybe when you were you know when you were at young age you um you had interest in high school and you promised yourself oh i'm gonna finish this high school and i think i'll be okay with that well guess what if you want to be better than what you think what, what you what you thought you could be then go further go further you finished that high school you did so great that means that's not your limit because you finished that high school with a flying color as in with a very good result that's telling you that that's not your limit like that's not your limit that's not your boundary you can still break that point you can see go ahead and do bigger session say uh, after the high school you thought about okay I don't want to sit around I want to go to a uh, university boom you start it and then you start going you know you start going to university or let's just say it's not a university let's say it's a tertiary institution you start going to a tertiary institution and you start learning things that you never thought you could learn and you're, you're understanding them and you're doing so well in them and if you're doing so well in them that still tells you that you can still do more than that so let me tell you one secret right if you are able to achieve something easily it only means first of all that you are good at that thing and that that's not that's not the max you can do that that's not the limit for you that's not the boundary you get what i mean you can go further if it's not actually tough and hard and difficult and you know you had a tough time with a subject and then you went and did a research you had to read this read that read that before you grasp what's on there it's not that kind of challenging then you have not break you have not broken your limit you have not even near your your limit so you need to like keep going okay um now if it's affecting if it's affecting other things like you know your life being maybe in your marriage or with your kids then you can set limit for yourself because you don't want to because of trying to achieve something then your family is suffering okay um that's not the best for me so I would not advise someone else to do that so that's that about that word um, 
I haven't told us who said that word. So uh, that word statement was made by Ken Venturi. Uh, Ken Venturi's full name was Kenneth Paul Venturi. Uh, he was an he was an American professional golfer and golf broadcaster. So he did play golf at one time, and then he ended up becoming a golf broadcaster. Can you see what I was talking about? See, he 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 became better than what he thought he could be. He went from being a golfer to being a a golfer broadcaster, or maybe from a golfer broadcaster to a professional golfer, whichever one is higher. Uh, in a career shortened by injuries, he won 14 events on the PGA Tour, including a major in the U.S. Open in 1964. Shortly before his death in 2013, Venturi was inducted into the World Golf uh, Hall of Fame. So this this guy Venturi really made some remarkable achievements. Uh, he was born May 15, 1931 in San Francisco, California. He died in May 17, 2013 at Rancho Mir Mirage in California. So he, it's like he traveled all, all over and then he, he, he died in California where he was born. Uh, his height his height was six feet zero inches. That's 1.83 meters. He retired in 1967. Uh, he went to San Jose State College, and his spouse was Kathleen M. Venturi, uh, 20, 2003 to 2013. Uh, Bill Witt Venturi, 1972 to 1977, 1997. Connie Venturi, from 1954 to 1970. So he, he married three times. Um, children was uh, children are Tim Venturi, Matthew Venturi. So um, I was unable to find any direct evidence where Napoleon Hill, um, uh, uh, where uh, Ken Venturi said this statement, but I did find where those statements were referenced in uh, books. So one of, uh, a few of the books are Socially Awkward, um, Overcome Shyness and Social Anxiety by Miranda Collier. Uh, another book was Parenting Tips for a New Age, made in 2021 by Denny Ray Christian. Alright, so that's that about letter I. I don't believe you have to be better than everybody else. I believe you have to be better than you ever thought you could be. That's the letter. Now, moving on to letter L, which is the last letter of the month april that we are using to extract all these quotes all these beautiful quotes um life is 10 percent what happens to you and 90 percent how you react to it this is so true until you really understand this statement you're gonna have a lot of hatred for people that hurt you you're gonna have a lot of internalized emotion that's hurting you every time you remember you, you might even be sick from that it might even affect your production your performance your efficiency it might even affect your marriage or your relationship. It might even affect your business or financial life. Okay? Because the, if you don't know that life is 10% what happens to you and 90% how you react to it, then you remain on the floor for a long time until you get it. 
um let me cite you an example um you see these days some people just like to bully other people it's human nature it's like that they just like to bully other people especially extroverts right when extrovert says that somebody is easily offended or they are easily pissed off or you can easily like turn their sleep and they will lose their mind and go crazy when extroverts see that they cannot keep on pounding on that until you learn that what they do to you what they are doing to you is just 10% of what is there to be done it's only 10% of your 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 emotional progress so i can put it that way so it's only tiny okay things are meant to happen to people things you have no control of okay or things you don't know nothing about can affect you but getting back getting back from me is 90 percent in your hands in your hands and nobody else is gonna come really get you out from it because if you tell if you tell your situation to other people because you are telling them because they did not experience it they might not be able to give you some cogent options to get you out of the situation or some some profound idea to lift you up from the situation and it may not work for you but when you realize that life is about coming back you're always coming back okay you're always coming back think about Think about human nature, for instance. Think about human nature. Where whatever life throws at human beings, human beings always coming back. Okay. Take the um, 9/11 attack, for instance. You know, some some people thought that that's gonna oh that's gonna break New York. It's gonna destroy it. No, we came back. We came back. People came back. They came back stronger. Think about COVID. You know, people thought, oh, after COVID, the world is not going to remain the same. Everywhere is going to be quiet. Uh, the economy is going to crash. No, no, no. Human beings are coming back harder and smarter and faster. Now, the level at which humans come back at situation depends on the location you are okay because right now some people still have strict policies on COVID-19 whereas in some countries like the country where I am the United States you know it has been relaxed okay it has been relaxed because what because human beings always have a way to come back when they get knocked down when they get Push to the floor, human beings always have a way to get back. And when they get back, we get back stronger. So use that same concept. Do you have a, a husband that always talk you down? You need to figure a way to come back harder. Now, no violence. I'm not promoting violence. You need to find a way in your mind to see that what your husband say to you it's just 10%, okay? It's just 10% of what happens to you. And the other 90%, you have that power. The other 90% is in your hands. It's in your hands, okay? Um. So, who made this statement? Uh, Charles R. Swindle made this statement. So, uh, where is Charles R. Swindle from? Who is he? Charles Roussel Swindle 
is an evangelical Christian pastor, okay, an author, an educator, and a radio preacher. He founded Insight for Living, uh, that's headquartered in uh, Frisco, Texas, which is a radio program of the same name on more than 2,000 stations around the world in 15 languages. Think about this. He is um, in more than 2,000 radio stations. You know, this is not easy, right? To, to air your program in over 2,000 stations all around the world in 15 languages. You know, this is not easy, right? You know how many times he has faced disappointment and rejection when he first started? If he had stopped, that would have been the end of his you know, evangelical uh, Christian career. But he did not stop. He kept going. Um, I don't know much of his life story, but this is all I know about it. Um, he was born in October 18, 1934, um, age 87 years old in El Campo, Texas. His spouse was Cynthia Swindle, born uh, 1955. Uh, notable awards that he got were the ECPA Jordan Lifetime Achievement Award in 1997, 12 ECPA Christian Book Awards. Uh, he has children, Carissa Swindle Gaither, Chuck Swindle Jr., Kurt Swindle, and Colin Dane. Uh, he has siblings, Lucy Swindle and Orville Swindle. The parents was Earl Swindle, Lovell Swindle. So, uh, where did Charles R. Swindle make this statement? I was unable to find any direct evidence where he made that statement, but I did find books where those statements were referenced. Uh, My Sweet Life is one of the books. It's a successful, successful woman with diabetes. Made in 2011 by Beverly S. Edler. You can find it in page 16. He also uh, referenced, some people also reference it in a book called What is Really Good. And the last book I found where that was referenced is Hashtag Name with a question mark. That book was made in 2019 by Hannah Beth Merritt. So, whether it frames you down or polishes you up depends on what you are made of. You may not be responsible for getting knocked down, but you are certainly responsible for getting back up. Just like I said earlier. Okay, so whether something knock you down you know maybe your husband or your friend or your job or your boss okay know that 90 percent getting back is in your hands okay 90 percent getting back now if if this is say like a um act that's not tolerated in your organization or in your institution you need to report that to whoever you need to report that to okay nobody should silence and suffer in silence okay if you are if you are if you're experiencing abuse in your relationship maybe marriage or you're just partner um do not suffer in silence you need to speak up speak up to somebody in your church speak up to somebody in your mosque speak up to your friend speak up Speak up to the police. Speak up. Just do not suffer in silence. Nobody, nobody should suffer in silence in their family or in their relationship. And that is all for April quotes. If you love, if you would love more quotes like these ones, 
you can find them um, on brainycodes.com. If you have learned something from this April quote, like, comment, and share this video, and please subscribe. That is all now. See you in the next video. Bye-bye.